Hi, welcome to our Future 40 2018 Facebook Live. We have three of our winners here with us today, and they're going to share their stories and give us a lot of inspiration about what, you know, their journeys and what it took to get here today. And plus, we want to hear your stories from our audience. We want to, we want your questions for our guests, and we want you to share your individual stories about how you, you know, your journeys to success. But first, I want to start with Sarah Beckel, who Great. is an advocate for men, maternal mental health and okay. started Family First Maternal Wellness Center, the first one in Saskatchewan. Yeah. I was just joking with Sarah about how <laughs> I needed her 18 years ago. I know. We're here now. We're here now. But you're here now. Yes. So tell me, how did you get started on this journey? Yeah, so it really came out of a lived experience type of situation. I had postpartum depression after the birth of my second child. She's six now? Seven, five. <laughs> uh, five. Uh, she's... Um, basically changed my life really and um, it gave me a front row seat to what postpartum depression really is and before I had her I didn't really understand the depth of what the illness is and um, yeah just realizing that moms had nowhere to go and that we're in this day and age where technology is at our fingertips and yet there's no access to education or support so I figured um I had a particular skill set. I have a passion for business, and why not um, intertwine the two and get going? Yeah. What was the hardest thing about starting? Oh, it was a, there's a lot of hard things about starting. Um, you know, probably one of the hardest things, other than just literally the financial end of it and having, you know, the investment to open a center like this, is it's just staying true to the vision of what you're wanting to do because. You know, do, doing something that's so new and sort of that, that doesn't really exist before, there's just a lot of barriers in terms of, is this worth it? Should I be doing this? I think this is a good idea. I know there's mom struggling and just staying true and, and um, doing the work and continuing, even though you hit hurdles and hurdles, you've just got to kind of keep going. And you must mm -hmm. hear so, from so many mothers who are saying to you, we're so happy you did this. I am. Yeah, it's... Um, sort of you know it is validating when moms do um when they're excited about it like even hearing you say like where were you 18 years ago I'm just like oh where were we 18 years ago this this should have been here 18 years ago um but you know the women that I've worked with in an online capacity over the last few years it's um it's just always nice to be of service and then also have a business that is that is rooted in helping people which is really important to me yeah Thank you so much for this, Sarah. And now we have Yaya Wang, who is a community advocate. When you hear Sarah talking, what do you think about people like her who, who are advocating for things like mental health? You know, I, personally, <laughs> Sarah delivered both my babies. Well, so I was your doula. <laughs> she was my you doula. You delivered your baby. <laughs> and um, I couldn't have had a better birth experience, and I'm so grateful for that. And it's just so nice to know that there are people out there in the community doing things like that, starting, um, you know, a, a center for mm -hmm. maternal wellness and being advocates for moms who need help. Um, it's just a really great part of the community. So you know how important being a community advocate is. What are some of your passions? You know, I grew up as an only child, so I relied heavily on the community for activities and to stay engaged. And as I got older, it just felt really natural to um, and, and instinctive to stay engaged and contribute. I think um, it's all of it's within all of us and a bit of our duty to give back to the community that raise us. If you were talking to your younger self today, what would you say to yourself knowing all the challenges you've had to face doing the work that you do? You know, I would tell myself, find somebody that inspires you and find the opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, so for, for years, I've been fangirling Pam Klein, um, <laughs> stalking her career in a in a non-criminal <laughs> way, but just, you know, I was so inspired by her and, and then I realized it's not anyone else's responsibility to introduce me to her. And I, um, at an event last year, I finally found, lingered around long enough and found an opportunity to introduce myself and strike up a conversation. And we ended up having so much in common and she's become such an important mentor to me and helped, you know, coach me through a lot of challenges and, you know, it, you just have to make that happen. So 
they are all very, very normal people and they remember what it's like to be in your shoes. So if there's somebody that really inspires you that you want to get to know, Mm -hmm. just go talk to them. Mm -hmm. Speaking of mentors, I was talking to Kiriako Ayatridis yesterday about mentors. He is a famous photographer here in Saskatchewan. He's being very humble. But we were talking about the importance of mentors. Tell me, who is your mentor? Well, uh, I actually randomly fell into photography. And uh, it was actually Greg Johnson, the tornado hunter, who gave me my first job. Uh, and he actually fired me on the first day. <laughs> so but, you know, I was persistent, and I came back. And I said, no, give me another mm-hmm. chance. And and we worked together for years. And you know, I, uh, he took me under his wing and taught me so much. And I watched him. Um, you know how, how he networked through conversations and, and negotiations, and you know I learned a lot. And uh, you know we commonly, you know, quite often we we would take on uh, photographers that were you know fresh graduates, and we found ourselves having to almost unteach a lot of the things they were being taught mm-hmm. because we didn't they didn't really serve them in real world situations. So, um, and that's not to say every program is the same. Just the graduates we had um but he was you know a a huge part of my of my career um so I do a lot to him for sure and when people think of photographers they think of romance and pretty pictures and and, you know we've all got iPhones and we could all do this but what really surprised me when I talked to you is the hard-nosed business aspect of it that you have to know a lot about that can you tell me about that yeah that's you know that's one thing I kind of learned early on you know it's there's definitely a romantic side to it, and there's definitely the you know the you know when it comes to shoot day, those are those are great, those are fun days. But it's all the behind the scenes and leading up to it, and networking and mark, marketing yourselves. That you know it's it's it is a business, and that's you know one thing I always kind of tell young photographers is like if you want to be a photographer, I would recommend going to you know university and studying business with you know and, and marketing because that's really. I'd say 70% of what you're doing and, and that last 30% is actually photography. Uh, but even to what you said, yeah, yeah, like I think being Regina, um, we have those opportunities to just kind of connect with people in the industry. Um, I, I kind of found that out recently. You know, I, I went to some larger cities and, and tried to network and market myself. And I, it was just so hard to get in front of people. I, you know, whereas Regina, if there's, you know, a marketing manager at a you know huge company being you know if they're if they're if their um, head office is downtown it's not that hard to actually set up a meeting with them and get in front of them yeah or you will see them at Costco on Saturday there's that too <laughs> actually I randomly knocked on Pam Klein's door at uh, kindergarten sorry at uh, Halloween the other day <laughs> so <laughs> for those who don't know who Pam Klein is for those who, who are joining us this is our 2018 Saskatchewan Future 40 live mm-hmm. Facebook event where we are talking to three very inspiring people who is Pam Klein Pam so Klein Pam is the CEO of Phoenix Group mm-hmm. Just an amazing woman. And she was she was someone who inspired you. Yeah, you know, I just, I always kind of looked up to her and her accomplishments and sort of from a distance and just finally decided I'm going to go introduce myself to her. And we ended up having such a great conversation that we continued um, outside of that setting and to this day. And that's, that's as um, Kiriako was saying, the genius of living in Saskatchewan. We are, mm-hmm. we are a community of people who support each other. Yeah. Sarah, where did you find support for your work? Well, a lot of my support really is actually coming from an online capacity, and um, which is really, really interesting. So over the past few years, I've sort of networked all across um, North America. When I was struggling, I... Um, came across a a blog article actually through an organization called Postpartum Progress and it was the six stages to postpartum depression as I'm reading them I'm going oh my gosh like this is exactly what I have this is exactly what I have Um, and then I sort of went on to to realize that they had an event for this called Climb Out of the Darkness and I just remember thinking oh my god there's an event for this we should have this event meanwhile I'm recovering myself um But if I'm recovering and I'm needing help, this would be sort of a good thing for our community and our community should have an event like this. Um, And so through that organization, I really, it was really boots on the ground education and what, um, what peer support really looked like and how um, the power of Me Too really was something and, and moms, moms need that. And, um, 
especially just connecting with other people doing the same type of work of what's working for you in your community? What could we bring here? Um, so I think we're in a really interesting time that although Regina is, um, I love Regina, I'm born and raised here. It is a wonderful community. There is a lot of resources online that we, you know, that we are sort of changing, that we can access uh, more information and, and support online as well. So um, those women and those advocates who are sort of sharing their story and being brave enough to share their story on a public platform like that, it's terrifying and being able to sort of lean on them um, has really helped fuel me to move forward in that um, this does matter and that we do have, we can do something about it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of advocates, you were a former president of Saskatchewan Young Entrepreneurs. Can you talk to me about why, why that work mattered to you? So <clears throat> SIPE, Saskatchewan Young Professionals and Entrepreneurs, is a local Saskatchewan organization with a chapter in Regina and Saskatoon. And their goal is to create a platform that engages young leaders and allow them to um, learn, connect, and engage in each other. Um, and I think, you know, it is about what the next generation is. Years ago, we lost a flood of people to Alberta, to other provinces and countries. And now I think people are choosing to stay in Saskatchewan. And it's because of these networks that are available to them. And like Kiriakou said, the opportunity um, to to just meet whoever the CEO or, you know, every, all the resources are so readily available and people are so engaged and willing to help. Um, it was just a really important thing for me to be a part of and create that space for the next generation of young leaders. And what challenges do you think young leaders are facing here in Saskatchewan? You know, for myself, one of the biggest challenges were, I mean, I have a young family. Um, so really it's now learning that work life balance before mm -hmm. I had kids, it was my own time. You can do whatever, whenever you need it to, and you can do all the hustling you need. But, um, as those tiny people come into your life, mm -hmm. everything changes. So it's really now learning to find the balance and learning to say no. Mm -hmm. And Kiriako, you too have a young family. Yeah. <clears throat> two little, <coughs> sorry. I have two little girls, uh, two and a half and five. Uh, well, she'll be five next month, and, and uh, I, I I know what you mean. Like I, I I'm really bad at bal that, that balance, and my definitely my wife gives me heck on that a lot. Um, you know, when it's time to turn off work and, and totally you know. Yeah. So, but it's at the same time that you, there's that that drive that we all have. I think mm -hmm. that as business owners, you know, oh, it's balance. It, it is wow. is a hard balance to find yeah. for sure. Yeah. And Sarah, what advice do you have for people? Because you must see a lot of young moms starting families in terms of finding their balance between work and life. I don't even know if it's so much about balance. It's just more about support, you know, um, because I think maybe there's unrealistic expectations that you think that you should have this this perfect balance. I know for totally. me, I'm working all the time. You know, moms are reaching out to me when they put their kids to bed and messaging me. So, you know, it's sort of real time work for me that, that I do. Um, but uh, again, and what we're doing in the center is a reframing motherhood and what that really is. Um, but same thing, being a woman in business or anybody in business with a family is, is just connecting with like-minded people who are going through the same thing to sort of help normalize what that is. Because who's to say that that's wrong, right? And maybe society's saying that that's wrong, that you shouldn't be spending that time. But as long as you're spending quality time with your children and investing when you're when you are there, you're present when you are there. That's sort of more important. So finding that community, um, especially you know, someone like Yaya, new, new kids and trying to figure out what this looks like is finding other moms in business and finding other people with young families. So there's like-mindedness there. We have Kat who says, Sarah Beckel, thank you so much for everything you're doing for mothers. Oh. This is such important work. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, I'm here because I've been there. You know, it's... Um, Mom shouldn't struggle alone, so we're just really trying to end that and, and pull that stigma and get rid of that stigma so more moms can get help. It's amazing. Like, I, I when we had our first daughter, you know, yeah. um, f for me, I was just in the mentality of babies are born in hospitals by, yeah. by doctors. And <laughs> what happens. it was my sister in law who I first kind of heard about a midwife and home births mm -hmm. and all this stuff. and. And you know, my, the, my, when we got pregnant, my wife wanted to do that. And, and, yeah. And it was, I was scared. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very scared. For sure. Um, 
Yeah, but after our, our first, you know, our first experience, there's, I think there's like it's the most natural way, and mm -hmm. there's you know no other way I'd want to do it. Yeah. When the second one came around, I was like, I think I was for sure like and that was one piece of advice <laughs> I always told my friends when they're expecting me like get a doula, get a doula, get a yeah. doula. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. You know, because we had Cheryl and mm -hmm. she was. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, and Tegan, our, our midwife too, like, you mm -hmm. know, she, she, like our, our birthing team was unreal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've had just heard so many, you know, heard so many um, stories mm -hmm. from, you know, there's lots of great stories from the hospital, yep. but I just heard a lot of scary stories. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And a big part of it is you don't know what you don't know. So mm -hmm. it's the unknown is always scary. So to have for me to have somebody there with me. Mm -hmm. totally. And you can plan all you want, but you can't mm -hmm. really plan birth. So, I mean, <laughs> it, mm, things come up. And so having a trained professional there to just guide you through even totally. some of those difficult times makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. So what a com commonality between all three of you is your very strong volunteer mm -hmm. work that you've done in the community. And for young people watching the three of you right now, I want you to tell them why volunteering is important and how it can actually make for a better business. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's our responsibility to all give back to the community that provides for us that we live in and to contribute. Um, and really, a big part of that is selfish because you really get to feel really, really good by mm -hmm. giving and doing. Um, so, and you know, through volunteer, my volunteer experiences, it's opened a lot of doors. I've been able to meet um, and network and get to know a lot of people that have changed and shaped my career, my personal life that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a photographer, that's, you know, we... There's so many nonprofits and 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 people are always kind of reaching out to photographers, mm -hmm. and that's one thing I kind of learned a few years ago is like, uh, as as a business owner, um, when to say no, and like, right. it, I'm definitely like I want to help as much as I can, but at a certain point, there's a lot of nonprofits that all need a lot of photos, and mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, you kind of you look at them, uh, and you're at these events, and you see all the other suppliers there that probably didn't do a hundred percent um mm -hmm. donation but at the same time you know i think it was important to me to find a, a core group of of um groups of that really spoke to me and those are mm -hmm. the ones i'm really involved with uh that you know i can i'll donate my time 100 percent and raise some money for them uh, but i think also as business owners we also kind of it depends on what your industry it is a photographer that's one thing i hear all the time photographers reach out to me is how do you deal with people mm -hmm. asking you know charities asking you for your work for free right. and I, I get that like you want to help everyone but you, at the same time we got to put food on our tables right. too right so i'm not trying to i'm not trying to <laughs> cast any Volunteer. shadows right yeah. here. Uh, i'm just trying to broaden that as you know from from both sides of the, from that you know because it is very very important and, and and every time i ever do any kind of charity work i, I feel you know, I'm, I, I feel great helping them and being able to use my craft to somehow help others in need is, is, is rewarding um, and find creative ways to do that. But um, at the same time, you also got to sure. set those boundaries <laughs> as a business owner for sure. Yeah. You know, do you find that like, you know, working, cause are you still with the Red Cross also? Yeah, yes. I, I mean, I, I love everything that I do, but that's definitely something I, I struggle with a lot is setting the boundaries, knowing what's too much, um, you know, how do I still ensure mm -hmm. I'm spending quality time at home, um, and I work too, right? So this mm -hmm. is just time outside of that. But, you know, like you said, it's just, it truly is so rewarding. So I take away a lot from these experiences as well. And you know, as much as we struggle, we can mm. all do a little less of something else to make a tiny bit more time. And and it just, there's a lot to take away. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, we have yet yeah, someone else who wants to let you know that you're a strong leader oh. and a compassionate ear. This is from Amy. For oh. those of us who have suffered from PPD, thank you for all your hard work and determination. Don't so be <laughs> making me cry on CBC <laughs> Facebook Live, you guys. Oh. But I think what this is um, bringing home is just 
like to be an advocate for mental yeah. health mm-hmm. is huge. And, and this is, I feel like this is a new era where yeah. it, there's a new awareness of how much it matters. Yes. It's just time. I mean, I feel like I'm just, I'm not recreating the wheel, but it's just, it's time that we sort of, um, and maybe it's just my perspective, but the birth work and the business world, they can go together. And um, I just always wanted to make uh, childbirth education, especially the mental health accessible and mainstream versus, you know, only certain people get doulas or only if you're having a home birth, you'd have a doula or only if you're wanting a drug free birth, you would get a doula. And that's, that's not how this works. You know, doulas have no agenda. Our agenda is your agenda and helping you get to your goals. Um, and when it comes to the mental health, I mean, we're in the midst of a mental health crisis right now, um, in this province across this country. And so, um, but we know what the solutions are. We know what the solutions are. We just have to invest. Um, and the it, investing in moms in particular, like we're starting at the ground level because when we invest in moms, we're investing in that next generation and, and the impact of untreated postpartum depression or anxiety is quite significant. So I feel like not only are we shedding some light on a really important issue, but we actually are going to be able to make an impact in the long term. So, um, this is something that's temporary and treatable. And again, even when I started um, like five years ago, we're talking about it, talking about, talking about, but now we need to do something about it. And so getting and and busting my butt to get the center (laughs) open, yeah, yeah, you know the ways, but um, it's just really important because now there's a place to go that um, deals with mental health, but also just the general transition of motherhood. When I struggled and I was looking for a counselor, I vividly remember looking online, going through the phone book even at that time, being like, who does this? Not a single counselor had PPD listed as their part of their specialty. And that just, I just couldn't really grasp why they wouldn't have that when one in five moms are struggling. So, um, so now we have a center, we have a counselor who can provide professional mental health. We have a naturopath there who can help nutritionally. But the core of what we do is that social support of getting moms out of isolation and and having a space to talk about the realities of motherhood. So we want to move past talking about mental health and actually doing something about mental health. And that's really what we're doing at our center. So mothers are one component. You were going to say something, Yaya? No, I was just going to add to that. Like, I think the work that Sarah does is really important because not only is one in five moms suffering from uh, postpartum of some sort, women Mm. are filled in the workplace, right? Mm -hmm. This is in the 19, Mm -hmm. I don't even know what, where most moms stay at home. So Mm It becomes important to our community because we have women leaders, we have women in the workplace, and this needs to be something that's just normalized and they need the support um, that's different than a a dad taking a little bit of time off Mm -hmm. because they're also physically um, going through so much and mentally and and you're the one that's taking time away from your work, from the community. So you really, you do get isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, it goes back to how important your support in the community really is. And yeah, like you were saying earlier, just sort of changing even just the workplace to more family-centered workplace. We, we most of us have families, yet the day-to-day grind of that nine to five and what happens if my kids are sick and what happens and you just feel such guilt but that you have a family. And um, I think when we look at, you know, that immediate postpartum, but then even in the work that you're doing and community building, factoring in those families so that it is normal, so that we do have a larger community to lean on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that Kiriako is also (laughs) I mean, and you're a dad, yeah. No, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, my wife would just love this conversation. (laughs) If she would love to be here. Because she, I I just, you know, uh, I hear, you know, we just made a, a decision as a family that, she wanted to be home mm-hmm. for the first five years of their yeah. life, you know. And it's it's interesting, like um, when you look at like uh, a lot of European European countries, and mm-hmm. their the support systems they have for new parents are like yeah. just miles ahead of ours. You miles know, ahead. longer parental leave and so much more support. And I, I just I wish we could kind of get there, but I think it's about educating mm-hmm. people and, and the importance that it has, right? And, yeah. And that's like every business too. Like I I, I don't know. Like I, I find that was a, a struggle for me is educating my clientele, mm-hmm. um, you know, about the importance of, of 
high in photography and what it can mean for your business. But it's, it's the same as there's so many challenges yeah. we have yeah. we're operating these businesses. But yeah. uh, I think it, what you're doing is like amazing. <laughs> and I, I've, I've, I've kind of seen such a wide spectrum um, of postpartum depression um, to just quite recently I found out a girl I went to high school mm -hmm. with uh, tragically took her life. Mm -hmm. So it, and it was postpartum mm -hmm. and, and I just, it just hit me like a rock. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I've kind of, it, it's, it, it's, you know, the as a new, cause of, as, it's the leading cause of maternal death in the first year. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, it's as a new dad, well, five years now, but like still a new dad, <laughs> it's new always dad. learning. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, you, you, you kind of, uh, it's something I never paid attention to as a bachelor. Just yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. have to think, you don't think about it until you have to. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and I, I know just personal experience. I always thought of postpartum depression as depression. You were mm -hmm. sad. You were just really, really wanted to cry all day, but it's, it's not, it festers in a lot of different yeah. um, ways and mm -hmm. anxiety being more anxiety, common. anger. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those moms go out back into the workforce, uh -huh. those dads, but then those dads also go back into the workplace totally. and when mom struggles, dad struggles. So anyway, we're in a mental health, like I said, zone right now and it does affect business. It does affect our whole communities, but. Yeah. And you were saying we know what those solutions are. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what some of those solutions are in your mind? Well, again, I think just that community and that bringing it out of the shadows so that, you know, when you're, you know, a photographer and you're taking all these clients and, you know, expected to take a huge client load on and be fine with it and just go do your job. There's probably not a lot of talk in the photography community about mental health and how does running a business affect our mental health and, um, who, how are we leaning on each other and, and do we have any groups or chats or mm -hmm. anything like that, especially when they are probably long hours and, um, yeah, so I think the biggest solution right now is is kind of t obviously talking about it, um, but creating networks. Um, so like looking at professional networks, like there's probably room for like a mental health something rather and, and getting um, other professionals um, talking and having that conversation um, is probably the biggest thing, I think, is expanding that conversation. And I think just knowing what the resources are that's available for myself, because mm -hmm. Sarah was uh, my doula, it was, I knew where to go, it was one phone call, mm -hmm. but, you know, 18 years ago, um, who do you call? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of mental health and, bu and business, how do you maintain that balance between making sure you don't get overwhelmed by starting mm -hmm. a new business? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> right. Tell us your answer. <laughs> There's different ways. That's, that's something I see. It's a kind of a, a segue, but um, there's kind of this weird shift happening. It's a bit of a disruption in the photography industry, where where the demand for so much social media content is high. Mm -hmm. Where I see photographers kind of moving from away from quality quality based product to more quantity based, and I've been there years of years ago i and i know how easy it is to get burnt out mm -hmm. um so i kind of made that conscious decision when i started my business in in 2010 that i wanted to be strictly quality based photography and and really take t the time to concentrate on pre-production and develop these high-end shoots so that i'm not trying to um you know constantly every day come up with a new mm -hmm. creative idea and you, you just get burnt out so fast and you kind of yeah. end up burning the candle at both ends so that was my solution was just to to kind of set myself as this you know high-end photographer and, and i just kind of create you know only kind of create these the style work and it kind of it, it's worked for me and against me I've, i'm kind of known as the expensive guy but it's not that i've just selling you one image for right. a lot of money it's it's i'm taking the time to develop that and spend weeks producing that shoot and think of every little nitty-gritty detail so that we're coming out with a very high-end quality product but i'm not i'm not you know you know coming up with these creative ideas it, it's and and concepts behind shoots it, it's it's mentally draining mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, uh it takes a lot um you know and it, it definitely helps to surround yourself with like-minded people mm -hmm. and and a really strong team. I always kind of say like our you know people like to 
praise me for my work, but if you take away the hairstylists, the makeup artists, the mm-hmm. wardrobe team, you know, the, the models, it's, it's a community of, of professionals yeah. that make this thing come together. The art directors from the ad agencies, like there's so many people involved. And that's one thing I kind of mentioned, there's a bit of disruption right now where I think I see a, because of this demand for so much content, uh, you know, what a company might have had, I'm just throwing out random numbers, say they would have had $10,000 for a budget for a photo shoot. They've kind of taken that and they, they separate it into a hundred, one hundred dollar photo shoots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, and, or, and so there's not enough budget <coughs> for this big team or it's just kind of a photographer mm-hmm. and it's kind of grabbing his buddies. It's just, it just kind of, I don't like where it's going. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing I always kind of tell young photographers is know the value of your work. Mm-hmm. As commercial photographers, what we're doing is creating materials that, make companies money um and uh you know i i i'm always trying to keep quality at the forefront so i'm always trying to guide my clients to a higher end product um sorry i'm going off a little bit of a tangent here uh but you know it's 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 something i I always try and ingrain in their minds you know And, and i and for example like i listed all these different disciplines and and people in the industry, that's another thing I've seen is that is the role of the content creator is, is something that's relatively new, where you're taking uh, photography teams, everyone I listed earlier, and you're taking video companies, which is a whole other industry, mm-hmm. and they're kind of being meshed into the one person at a company who's generally being paid, a, a, you know, like a junior level salary, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they're responsible for replacing an entire two industries. It just seems kind of weird to me. Um, and it's something I'm actively trying to fight against, but it's, it's like any industry that has a disruption, you know, Mm -hmm. you have to kind of navigate through that. Um, you know, if you look at, you know, uh, um, sorry, I'm I'm trying to think of the hotel, uh, where people rent their houses out. Sorry. Oh, Airbnb Airbnb, 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 or Uber, you know, it's just like, there's a lot of these industries that have kind of been disrupted and yeah. you kind of watch how they're navigating. I'm trying to you know do my best, but that's definitely something that's been at the forefront of of my challenges, challenges yeah. the past <laughs> year or two, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's really interesting because for me, the trend I think right now in Saskatchewan is to collaborate. And that brings to your point, I never recommend somebody just go and do their own photos or if it's for you know something that's supposed to represent your business if you're not a professional you're just you're not going to get that quality right so for for me like it's all about the networking and building those relationships and creating those give and take um you know partnerships where you can come together Mm -hmm. and support each other and that's interesting. When I started my business in 2010, that was one thing. When I broke onto the scene on my own, I really wanted to kind of make a splash. So I kind of found that my, my go-to team, you know, like Sarah Lindsay and mm-hmm. Riley Lawson and Chris Pritchard. Those were kind of our, our go-to team at that time. And we just started doing creative shoots, collaborations. Yeah. We kind of totally. started doing shoots that would cost in the you know tens of twenties of thousands of dollars something that we didn't we knew our clients probably didn't want to pay us at the time and we just did it for fun and just to show people mm-hmm. what we were capable of doing yeah. and then we just kind of put it out into the world and people mm-hmm. started to take notice and it started to generate actual Business. paying jobs yeah. Yeah. and from that we were able to kind of take those shoots and kind of build case studies where we kind of showed future clients say listen this company invested this money in the mm-hmm. shoot and this is their return on investment and actually kind of provide physical numbers of how, you know, increased traffic and how increased sales and, you know, and, and just kind of, that's what I mean, always treat it like a business. And it's, it's not just pretty pictures, but they're totally, you know, mm-hmm. and from that collaboration, you all took a piece exactly. from it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So networking and working together seems to be a, a key message here. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to young people who are starting off? you know, in their endeavors of how important networking is. Yeah. You know, we live in such, um, a great community for networking where people are generally really open, um, and willing to meet you and it's accessible. That's the key Mm -hmm. thing about being in Saskatchewan. People are accessible. Um, but you know, I always say you want to go to a networking event and 
always speak to somebody you don't actually know already. Otherwise, you're, it defeats the whole purpose. Um, so that goes kind of back to what I would have told my younger self is just to approach those people that inspire you. Approach somebody that you want to be. And you might be surprised at how alike you already are with that person um, and what they can offer to you and value. But just jumpstart yourself and get into the right types of conversations. But it's really, really important to be out there. And for me, um, through volunteering, it was just such a great way to do two things. I really had to agree with you because, like, for me, especially... All, most of what I'm known for is photographing people. And I, when I started as a photographer in 2005, I was an introvert. I, I was, mm-hmm. you know, I was shy. Um, and, and it was, that was my biggest, you know, drawback. I think my, my biggest, you know, cr- um, thing that was working against me is that, you know, I was, I just kind of, scary. it was scary. Cause yeah. I, and I still sometimes challenge, to, uh, I'm challenged with this, but like, I'm a very technical photographer where I'm actually, right. I'm so concerned on what's the lights doing in my, and, and, and what's happening technically that I need to sometimes actively remind myself to engage with my mm-hmm. you know, subject or client. Right. Uh, and it was the same thing with networking. Like it was so hard for me to put myself out there, but yeah. you know, with time and practice, you just got to put totally. yourself out there. And, and you just, you always have to have a goal, whether it's meeting mm-hmm. five new people, whether it's meeting a specific person uh, or meeting someone in a specific industry. You know, I always try and tell people go in there with a goal so that mm. you can take away something from it. Definitely. Mm. How important was networking for you to set up your center? Sarah? I, that's a tricky question because I, um, I don't, I feel like networking now is probably where I'm like, I was just telling myself the other day, I'm like, okay, I've got to get out there. And like for the past, you know, how many years just having the client load that I've had, it's sort of been like so focused on the work itself. Um, that I just haven't really gotten out and done those things, but now having, having a space and, and hoping to grow it, um, that's sort of friend of mind, but, but you're right. Like it's terrifying to go and meet new people. And, um, especially when you have anxiety to go and like <laughs> meet new people. Um, but you kind of have to feel that fear and do it anyway. That's sort of my motto in life right now is just, it's worth it. And just put yourself out there because you sort of have to remember that everybody else at the event probably feels the same way totally. and there are going to be commonalities and, um, you don't have to be best friends right off the hop, but just like getting into the practice of meeting new people, um, is important. And the amount of people that have sort of reached out since we've opened has been quite, um, quite interesting and, and really great to see that it's, Hey, you know, great. Congratulations on your, let us know how we can send people or let us know how we can f- refer moms. And, um, do you do this type of work? And, and so now it's just that I feel like now we have the physical space that now is the time to kind of get out and do that networking in a, in the business community versus just with moms and, and the clients themselves. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that, um, and learning who the other professionals are because, I mean, for the last few years, we've been like, who are the professionals doing this work? And so now we have this common ground of a center that we can um, start meeting other counselors and and what type of therapies do you do? And um, how can we build a healthy community um, that supports moms? So that's kind of our mission over the next year. It's definitely, you know, I think it's funny because as a photographer, there's different types of photography that are so, if you play cards right, there's so easy in my opinion, to actually grow and network. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, you have two sides of it. There's, mm-hmm. there's the, you know, the joyful birth, but there's also the therapy side. Right. But on the joyful birth side, like, I think, I don't know how many people I, I just raved about our birth right. team and like, I just, these, you know, I right. recommend, and it's just word of mouth, right? Yes. And if you kind of are tied with this like quality product, <laughs> service uh, service, service. Uh, <laughs> then it, it goes a long way and yeah. as you know a long time ago I started as a, as a wedding photographer mm-hmm. well I started as a sports photographer and then weddings when I did weddings I, you know it's I don't do it anymore but it's <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting because I tell people in the wedding industry like you kind of have it a bit easy because if you think about it it's like as long as you're doing you, a great job and mm-hmm. people notice it and you deliver a good product it's it's so easy to grow that business very quickly as mm-hmm. far as you have it's your, a sexy product it's yeah. a sexy product yeah. and, but you have your you have your your couple and then um, everyone in the wedding party right. you know then when they get married like oh who's going to shoot who's going to shoot your wedding oh you know mm-hmm. my sister hired 
so and so. Let's hire them, and it kind of builds. And yeah. then these families grow, and then you start shooting their their children, and then you start shooting their their um, right. family events, and especially if you're doing families and weddings, like yeah. you could have a client for life, you know, mm-hmm. if you play your cards right. So it's 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 you know, whereas in commercial photography, it's quite cold sometimes, and mm-hmm. you can get dropped easily. Mm-hmm. So it, it's that's just kind of. Part kind of sucks. You know, it kind of goes back to networking and and being prepared yourself. So you always want to go out there um, and know what your goals are. But you know, I think a big part of this is marketing. Really, is about who you are. It's what you look mm-hmm. like. What you know, how you dress yourself, how you present yourself and advertising is about what you're doing. And then branding is how others view you. So it's really important to establish, have these things established Mm -hmm. and do your homework when you're ready to go out there and meet people, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than being unprepared in a situation when you're meeting that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I, sorry about six years ago, I, I went to Vancouver thinking I was Hot stuff. <laughs> why. Yeah, that's one thing I learned is never, never think that and never stop learning. Because <laughs> if you think you're good, you're not. Um, there's always someone better than you. There's right? always yeah. someone better than you and yeah. more experience. And and but anyways, when I went to Vancouver, I I tried I created this book of my work and I kind of tried to line up meetings with ad agencies and it just got the door slammed on me so many times mm-hmm. and just went back to Saskatchewan with a tail between my legs and. You know, it just, it was, it hurt my ego like crazy. And that's, <laughs> that was when I, you know, it took me a while to recover from that. And, and I did this, you know, six years later, I just kind of went to Vancouver and tried the same thing. I, you know, I started developing relationships with some ad agencies there and, and I tried to, to harness those and, and get ins with other ad agencies and, and network myself. And it was such a night and day difference when I was just mm. so much more prepared um, yeah. and going into it and, and not just say, here's my, my work, hire me is, mm-hmm. is kind of understanding what clients were looking for and, and mm-hmm. what yeah. kind of answers they were looking for. It's totally know? about what value you can provide to people, right? I think we're all just so blinded by, um, an, an overdose of people pushing things, products, services onto mm-hmm. you. So it's creating a space where you're creating value, um, and something that you can offer to someone else. Definitely. Yeah. That's an interesting concept, adding value. Can you elaborate more on that? You know, I think um, there's just, just, like I said, there's just too much buzz around, uh, you know, what you can do and what you are about. But really, until you can engage somebody and do something for them, you're not going to capture their attention. We work, you know, in technology. We have screens all around us so you're really losing people's attention span are just getting shorter and shorter and shorter so you need to be able to you know whether it's a photo or a message you need to capture them within the first few seconds Mm -hmm. if you want to engage them so again it goes back to being prepared with what your messages are who you are um, how you want to be seen and what can you do for someone And the personal connection, I think, too, and just sort of like the way you're carrying yourself and, you know, walking into an ad ad agency and maybe not feeling as confident, like going back the second time, I think that comes across as well. So, um, yeah, just knowing your value and, and, um, and honoring that a little bit too, when you're out there. And I think humility is a big part of this because there's always something to learn, right? The world is always changing. Um, art, technology, mm. everything is changing. So you have to keep up mm-hmm. and Definitely. stay relevant. Yeah. Yep. It gets harder for young people to realize that everything doesn't exist on their phone and their yeah. contact, connection with people isn't just digitally based. Right. Can you guys talk to me about the importance of face-to-face communication in terms of establishing yourself? I think, you know, the world of social media has really given people a platform to portray who they, who they want to be and be selective about only Mm -hmm. certain images. And I think you see probably a lot of that. Um, You see a mom posting pictures, perfect Perfect mom, but that's not reality. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of societal pressures around that. But the reality is you still have to work with people. Mm -hmm. Um, You still have to know how to social and inter socialize and interact. And it still all comes down to the relationship that you can build with someone because Mm -hmm. you have no other advantage other than, 
you as a package. And I think another thing just with the age of social media that any new young entrepreneur coming up, it, this isn't instant. There's no instant gratification in building a business. It takes mm -hmm. time. And so in a world where you get things immediately, um, building a business takes time, you know, and you sort of have to invest your time and, and be patient um, as well. But, you know, for me, even just being in a have been working in an online capacity and supporting moms and then now being in the center, there is absolutely still a need for face to face somebody to we're hardwired for connection. And even though you can connect online, it's just not the same thing as when someone's yeah. right in front of you. Um, I think there's room for both, but it just has a more personal yeah. impact, right? Because we are so connected through, um, technology, why? Why you mm -hmm. over someone else? That's always an important decision when you're selecting mm -hmm. a client or um, somebody to work with. So if you can have that additional personal impact, mm -hmm. that's going to be the change maker. As you guys are chatting about this, I'm, I'm thinking it from a different from mm -hmm. a different approach, where it's more as uh, as, as image an image maker. Um, how when I go to my meetings, I often have printed versions of my mm -hmm. work and yeah. how far that takes me in a meeting tangibles mm -hmm. because yeah. people are just so used to seeing everything digitally and they're right. just kind of like oh where'd you get this printed and oh, it's just, like it's really? so nice Should to see things print? blown up and yeah. printed it's like it's such it's almost like a lost art these mm -hmm. days but it's like something i'm definitely kind of <laughs> right. holding on to tight as yeah. long as i can and what i think you know even clients and potential clients take notice of that and they appreciate mm -hmm. that for sure yeah you know well, I think we're coming to an end of our Facebook Live. Yay. I wanted to thank our panelists yeah. today for sharing their invaluable advice to our audience. And I wanted to thank our audience who is patiently listening and sending in their questions and comments. For people who want to learn more about our Future 40 winners, you can go to our website, cbc.ca slash SASC. All our Future 40 uh, winners are being announced um, uh, as the days go forward. Yet tomorrow will be the final installment of their last group of winners. So please read about them and learn mm -hmm. about them contact them and they have a lot to offer and they, yeah. as you can see they're very generous with their time and their expertise and they'd like to talk to you thank you so much you guys thank, thank you for having us